Now, let's understand how do atoms exist, okay? Now, we told you that atoms are basically the smallest and the finest of the particles which are there. So, let's say for example, you have these various atoms, okay? These atoms per se are actually moving around here and there, right? It's just like, let's say for example, we as humans are not designed to live in isolation. Imagine a situation where, you know, you are told that you have to live all alone for, let's say, years and years and years and years together. Well, you do that. Maybe some of the people who are not the regular ones might stay behind, but this percentage is not going to be maybe more than 1%. Most of the other people or the other human beings tend to go and interact with each other. Now, these could be your parents, these could be your colleagues, your friends, your girlfriends, or anyone for that matter. Right? Similar is the state with the case of atoms. Most of the atoms cannot remain in isolation. And what do they do? They are very, very reactive for that matter. What does this mean? So let's say if you have a hydrogen atom and uh, you have a chlorine atom. Most of the times if these atoms are around, they are going to go and react with each other. Right? So given a choice, this particular atom of hydrogen would react with this atom, okay, to form hydrogen chloride. Similarly, this one is going to go and go and create hydrogen chloride. There are some of these atoms which are also known as uh, noble gases, which tend to remain in isolation, okay. And there are actually uh, something like helium, neon, krypton and some more gases which are there whose atoms okay the atoms of these normal gases stay alone they do not go out and react with each other why because these are very stable so they don't keep on moving around except for a few of these most of the atoms are very reactive okay and they go out and react with other atoms which are available so in that case when they go out and react with the others, what happens is they could either form a molecule or they could form an ions, right? So when they are not in a free state, when they are not in a free state, they are going to go out and react with the other atoms and either form a molecule or an ion. Once they form these kinds of, either of these two, they become stable. When I say what does this mean, this basically means that, you know, you had an atom of hydrogen, you had an atom of chlorine, okay? Ultimately what happened was hydrogen and chlorine got together and formed hydrogen chloride. Once they got together and formed this, they become stable, right? Then effectively they are bonded together. They cannot just go and mix with another chlorine or something. Although that is also technically possible at times. But still, the extent of reactiveness that they have goes down. So an atom can either exist in a free state something like the noble gases that we're talking about or if they do not then they go out and either form a molecule or they form an ion. Now coming about molecules, even the molecules can be existing in two subshapes. Okay. One in case of elements okay, and the other case could be in case of molecules could be that of a compound. In case of molecules of element, what happens is there are various atoms which could be two or more than two. Okay, let's say one, two and three. But all these atoms, all these atoms that we are talking about here are similar. So let's say for example, if you talk about a hydrogen molecule which is known as H2, in this case two atoms of hydrogen which are same get together to form one hydrogen molecule. Similarly for nitrogen which is written as N2, two molecules of nitrogen, two atoms of my, uh, nitrogen get together to form a molecule of this thing. Whereas in the case of molecules of compounds what happens is that you have one, two 
or maybe even more atoms okay and these atoms are of different things so let's say this is hydrogen H this is chlorine Cl and then hydrogen chloride molecule is formed okay now the other form in which these atoms can exist what we spoke about is ions but I'm not covering ions in this particular video ions I'm going to take completely in a one full-fledged video we will be discussing all the aspects relating to ions but just to kind of uh, maybe for the sake of completeness let me tell you what an ion is an ion is basically nothing it is a positively or a negatively charged atom it could be a single atom or it could be a group of atoms right so even the atoms can exist independently okay so let's say for example if I uh, says say sodium a sodium atom is written as Na if it is positively charged then this is written as Na and the sign of plus is put in over here once this becomes Na plus right this can happen once let's say a loss of proton or a neutron or something like that happens which I am going to discuss later then it can continue to exist as it is right so for the sake of completeness or summarizing this particular video we said how do atoms exist independently an atom cannot exist on its own because they are very reactive they go out and react with other atoms to form either molecules okay or they could be ions there are only very few atoms which are mainly known as the noble gases something like a helium or a neon or a krypton which exist independently right with that we come to an end of this video thank you for being with us